Hey everybody, Payments Professor here, and I want to welcome you to the Payments Podium, where we're going to be picking at faster payments. That'll make more sense in just a minute. Today we have Carolyn Cipriano. She is the co-founder and the CEO of JJ Fortech. Carolyn, I want to welcome you to today's show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. Now, uh, in welcoming you to the show, and we're going to be talking a lot about what's happening in Brazil and the Brazilian instant payment schemes. But before I get that, one of the things I love to ask people is, how did you get started in electronic payments? Because this is one of the weirdest industries. You know, people are like, there's no degree there. You know, you don't even know about it. Even people who work at banks are like, we have a payments department. What are you talking about? So how did you get started in electronic payments? That's actually a great question because I'm actually a lawyer. So that's a part that I kind of like hide because when I mentioned I'm responsible for operations, you know, I'm basically like responsible for everything but technology and the company. Everyone's just like, oh, wait, you're a lawyer? <laughs> yes. Um, so actually, um, I used to work um, at a financial, a financial market infrastructure. So basically uh, an infrastructure that was responsible for registering collateral. Um, and basically, as collateral, we used to focus um, in card receivables. And uh, it, it sounds pretty <laughs> complex, but it all started because um, uh, we started this business inside this big like holding group that uh, had uh, an acquirer inside of it. Uh -huh. And then um, because of, uh, of the acquire, we just thought it through and thought, oh, well, we are a big group with a lot of like um, tech company and uh, highly related to uh, payments. Um, and it's actually a, a, company, a company called Stone, um, Stone Co. It's NASDAQ listed. And uh, so uh, we basically thought that a cool new business would be getting into uh, the, the financial market infrastructure. And I was uh, in the institutional relations department. So basically, um, I would interact a lot um, with uh, the Brazilian central bank, and it has a lot to do with what uh, we will talk about today. Um, so I used to interact a lot with the Brazilian central bank, and one day uh, just thought through, why don't we just open up a financial market infrastructure? So I ended up um, starting off a business inside of the group, and I, was, I used to be a statutory director for that company. Um, and I, you know, it, it was a business starting off. So you just do a lot of hands-on work. And I did, I just worked in all of the different departments. And then I ended up being a, a lawyer that actually <laughs> did a lot but lawyering, you know? So that was it. And then uh, in the end of the day, um, with the whole uh, buzz of instant payments in the U.S., with uh, the Fed Now service to be launched now in July, um, I just I was invited to join JJ for Tech, and uh, now we are in this whole exciting payments revolution in the U.S. So that's how it all happened. Oh my gosh, that is always such a great story to hear because nobody, <laughs> like I said, goes to school saying I'm going to go into electronic payments. But you already hinted to well. First of all, I do want to also point out. Payments has the coolest lawyers, no doubt about it, right? But, yes, that's so true. And we definitely don't learn any of that in school. It's like, hey, do you want to learn some like um, central bank regulation? Like that, that doesn't happen. Yeah, reg E, no, no, no. Reg E, yeah, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> right. you, you mentioned a Fed now, and you also talked about, you know, Brazilian instant payments. Let's get started with just a quick high level introduction of what is available as far as instant payments in Brazil. What's it called? I know it's the PIC system, but uh, when did it launch? How long has it been around? Give us a short history of that. Sure, and actually this is a really exciting subject and I know that we're gonna talk a lot about that today. But basically, as you mentioned, there's an instant payment system in Brazil called PIX. So it's P-I-X, that's how it goes. And actually I have a curiosity about its name because uh, I, I don't know if everyone is aware of that, but in Brazil, the language spoken is uh, Portuguese. So I'm saying that because a lot of people think it's Spanish and it's not. So, oh, so pigs is a word in Portuguese. No, it's not. Actually, um, the Brazilian Central Bank created the word as a brand, basically to resonate with technology. And so the word pigs actually comes from pixels. 
And uh, the, the central bank even created a logo, and the logo is basically a match of a, a transaction, kind of like a, a, an arrow that looks like a transaction and also a pixel. Um, so they really wanted to create uh, a, a brand that would be easy, you know, so short name, easy, would be effective, and would be unforgettable, because Pix is just easy to say. That's really and, no different than the Fed coming up with Fed now. It's not really a word. They took a couple things and made a word, right? <laughs> yes, that's pretty much it. That's it. Um, and so uh, basically, PIX is managed by the central bank. So the Brazilian central bank, it was launched by the central bank, managed by the central bank. And it was mandated over, um, uh, over financial institutions and uh, some fintechs. Uh, it was launched in November 2020. Um, there was basically a regulation around 2018 about it. And then um, a lot of tests were, were, were ran uh, with the institutions involved. And then it was actually like launched in November 2020. So I would say like to sum it all up, basically how it started, that, that's how it went. Okay, can I ask you, uh, when a couple of words you said in there pop out right away, mandated and regulation. Is this mean or does that mean that in Brazil it's required by financial institutions to be able to be on the PIX network, to be able to offer PIX options to account holders? Yes. So uh, it is mandatory for all financial institutions to join the PIX system. And uh, the central bank did that basically to push innovation. Basically, the Brazilian central bank thought that um, it would be uh, – just a lot of work, um, just encouraging banks to hop on. And uh, uh, the, the, the central bank knew that it would be a lot faster, faster to implement if they just um, mandated banks to do so. And also the mandate is extended not only to financial institutions, but also to uh, regulated uh, institutions called payment institutions that are kind of like fintech, so some sort of like fintech type, but it's only for a few uh, fintechs. So basically the ones that hold um, at least 500,000 accounts. Um, and then for other fintechs, um, it's just optional. So that's also, the, the optional part is also really interesting because the central bank really wanted to get ubiquity and really wanted consumers to adopt the system. So they did the most they could to make it um, the most um, the most inclusive possible. And that's uh, and they, they did that also by adding the fintechs and not only limiting the financial institutions. But an interesting part of, of this whole system is that even though it was mandated, um, uh -huh. there was a lot of work done um, through financial institutions with the central bank. So basically the PIGS was built in a kind of like collab of financial institutions with the, the Brazilian central bank. Of course, the system was launched by the central bank. It was released. So the whole like backbone of PIGS is offered by the Brazilian central bank, but it was built kind of like uh, for four hands, you know, like everyone all together, uh, making sure that it would fit, right? Like the needs of the financial institutions. And so I think that's I why it worked really well. that to Fed now? Mm -hmm. because a couple of things I'd like to mention, make sure listeners out there know, Fed now is not mandated, is not required in the US, not at all. But I wanna point out too, that, that it was built in a similar fashion that the Federal Reserve Bank offered a pilot program to financial institutions to come in and participate in the building of Fed now. So that's something that I think our our government learned from, you know, the Brazilian government and central bank and how they built such a successful program. In fact, part of the success that comes from a payment program comes from the use cases that are out there. Because I hear all the time people are like, Fed now, who's going to use it? I did a podcast with Dr. Angela Murphy, and she talked about use cases for an hour. There are mm -hmm. so many. What are the use cases for PIX? What's making it successful there? Perfect. Well, I love talking about use cases because there are a lot. But just I just want to get back to your last question a little bit. Because uh -huh. um, there's also a really interesting part about um, this whole like um, mandate part and the whole like being inclusive. 
Because um, one really interesting thing that also the, the Brazilian Central Bank did was enabling indirect in participation. So basically, um, some financial institutions can join using other financial institutions or using um, third-party service providers. So um, there's all there's actually a category of service providers that are regulated by the Brazilian Central Bank, and they're called PSTIs. And so these PSTIs, they are um, close to the financial system, right? Because they are authorized by the central bank, and they are they offer the tech for fintechs to join the system and also other financial institutions. So that was really important also, I would say even essential to make um, it viable for small financial institutions and for some fintechs. And I think this is also a really important model that we can also bring to the FedNow service. Um, we know that there are a lot of tech service providers just like JJ for Tech and Pigeon also. And these, uh, I really believe that tech providers are going to be essential to bring these institutions on board even without mandate because in the end of the day we know that these institutions don't really have a lot of resources um, in-house and also no, they don't have a lot of developers so the this indirect participation is really important to really um, make this system universal so closing this parenthesis I'll go back to your use case question um, so um, when it comes to use cases I'd say that you're gonna see pigs basically everywhere in Brazil and that's actually really impressive because I have to say that at first I was a little bit skeptical about it. I was going to say, I, I, I just thought, like, come on, people are not going to use it. You know, it's kind of, like, complicated. Are you going to use your phone to pay for everything? And will that really happen? Like, businesses are not going to accept it. Uh, actually, I was wrong. <laughs> In the end of the day, nowadays in Brazil, um, you can transfer money, of course, like, to a friend by typing only an alias. So it's really common for P2P. Um, you can definitely pay for food at restaurants or you can buy a good at like big retailers or at street vendors. Um, you can buy gas at a gas station. You can pay for like your purchases at an e-commerce. E uh, you can pay for invoices. You can even pay for public transportation and so on. These are just a few examples. But Just a few? That's like a laundry yeah. <laughs> list of places you can do payment. And I love that you said, who's going to use their phone? I'm going to use my phone every chance I can get. My 13-year-old Liam, it's, it's actually funny. If we go somewhere and I pull out cash or somebody uses cash in front of us, he'll be like, Dad, they are working against you. Show them how to use the phone. <laughs> Yes, no, that's so true. And actually, um, there, uh, there's also like some use cases that I really like, which is like using pigs only to just like withdraw cash. So you can go to a store and you can withdraw cash without purchasing anything. You don't need to like purchase something and then get some money, some, some cash back. It's not it. Um, you can just like go there and just withdraw cash. And uh, there's also another use case that wait, I wait. like. You got to stop because you actually just blew my mind. <laughs> I sit around thinking of use cases, and I got to tell you, that is a first. I have never thought of using an instant payment system just like you would. Uh, for me, I mean, I'm going to date myself. Back <laughs> in the day, I used to take a check, and I would write cash on my check and go to my own bank and hand them a check that I wrote cash on to get cash out of my own account. Yeah, so you don't need to do that. Fine. Yes, and now you don't need an ATM. You can go to any store and you can just, of course, like you get the, the store needs to enable that system, but um, it's it's really practical. Like forget ATMs, you don't need them anymore. You know, that really big machine, you know? And another, but another use case that is actually like really day-to-day -day stuff and it's pretty simple and you would imagine that's one of like the obvious use cases is Imagine you're at a restaurant, right? And you're having a, a meal at a restaurant in Brazil. And um, first, another curiosity here and like cultural curiosity is that in Brazil, it's kind of rude um, if a waiter just drops the check um, on your table with be, like without you asking for it. So in Brazil, you have to order the check. If you don't order the check, that's kind of rude. So uh, if, the, if the waiter just like drops it. And then um, let's say you're having your meal and then you want to, you have this great meal, you want to pay for the check, you order the check. And then um, in Brazil, 
uh, the waiter is not going to get you a card, you know, and take it behind the counter, you know, and process your payment and then bring it back for you to sign it. That doesn't happen. So basically what the waiter does is uh, the waiter brings a mobile POS to your table and then if you're going to pay through card, they're just going to swipe your card. And when we're talking about picks, what's going to happen is uh, basically a QR code will pop up on the mobile POS and you're just going to use your phone, read that, scan that QR code and you're going to pay for it. So you can just like, well seated, like at the restaurant, you don't need to do anything but hand out your phone and pay for your meal. So, and that's widespread, like that, that's like widespread. Everybody's doing it. Yeah, everyone is doing it. So that's amazing, really. There are a lot of practical cases. And, um, and besides all these use cases, we got to think also of the, the impact of that, you know, because um, that basically takes cash out of circulation. You know, we're seeing that. All right, now we got, I got to warn you, 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 be careful because, you know, the payments professor does a lot of Instagram stuff with the general public. And there are a lot of people that are out there saying this Fed now thing is going to take away all of our cash. And I'm telling them it, <laughs> it's not meant to, but indirectly, one of the things that happens with instant payments is you suddenly will see exactly where I believe you're going that you suddenly see you don't need as much cash because you can do everything more, in my opinion, more securely and safer because I'm not yeah. carrying the cash from your phone. Gosh, that's actually, I think, one of the uh, one of the best, you know, benefits of uh, PIX in Brazil and that impacts directly banks. This is a, a, a huge benefit for banks. And one of the reasons why banks are quite happy with picks and uh and 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 i like basically um when you use more instant payments you need less cash and that's not a bad thing that's actually a good thing why because banks have a high cost handling not only banks but business owners and banks have a high cost handling cash so um, in, in Brazil, from like a research from one of the main associations, like bank associations, Febrabon, uh, with like costs of, of cash handling, banks would spend uh, about 10, um, 10 billion reais a year with uh, cash handling. That's that about... B with a, a B, right? Billion. B. B. So that, that's around like 2 billion US dollars just with money logistics. So cost of money logistics, uh, that's what banks spend, uh, uh, spend in Brazil with the cash. So if they can reduce that, it's basically like a huge cost reduction. Um, and not and that, that came like, again, from the mouth of banks, you know, it's not like the central bank saying, oh, that's a great benefit. No, that's like the bank saying that this is a huge benefit of instant payments. And um, not only that, uh, business owners, they have the same problem. So um, probably you've heard that uh, not only Brazil is a huge country, right? When you talk about like its geography, because it's the fifth largest country in the world in extension. Um, of course, uh, we have to say that there are a few like um, violence issues and you want, of course, as a business owner to avoid any sort of like robbery, theft, and you know, if you're just uh, handling a bunch of money from one point to the other, that increases cash your risk. increases crime. It's, yes. it's actually a fact around the world when cash yeah. is more accessible to a potential criminal, the chances for crime go up. Yep, and so that's a huge benefit for not only for the business owners, you know, like handling cash, but also for consumers that they don't need to walk around with a lot of cash in their pockets. So that's a huge benefit uh, for the whole chain, right? And also um, that brings me to another point that I think it's one of the most important ones when it comes to picks also, because uh, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of like discussion in the market when it was about to be released, if it was going to impact bank margins. So what yeah. is really the, the, the financial benefit, you know, for financial institutions uh, by launching instant payments? Um, and in the end of the day, um, what happened was an impact of really like a loss in uh, bank transfer fees for like basically like bank to, to like the main products 
for bank transfers called TED and DOC. Uh, but the fact is that TED and DOC fees weren't really the most significant fees for financial institutions anyways. Um, and through PICS, banks could then benefit from the entry of new customers, from consumer data increase, and also from what I already mentioned, the lower um, on like cash handling costs. Um, so, and, and also by offering a better service, banks also gained from greater consumer satisfaction. So in the end of the day, like when it comes to a uh, fee decrease, uh, the impact like from a, a research that Morgan Stanley did, like banks ceased to receive together around 2.2 billion reais, and that's about like 500 million US dollars. And it sounds kind of impressive, you know, when you just look at mm -hmm. five, when you look at the, the number, right, the absolute number of 500 million US dollars. But you have to consider that that represents the sum of the amounts received by more than 150 banks in the country. And for, for example, for Itaú, which is currently the largest bank in Brazil, that revenue cut represented less than 1% versus when we call what when we when we go to the gain of efficiency we have to remember that their costs to handle cash is 10 billion so we're talking about 10 billion of cost versus uh 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 2.2 billion reais right in revenues so here we're opening up a window of new you know, a, a whole new market that they can access. We have, basically we had uh, 49 million, if I'm if I'm not wrong, I'm gonna double check here. But I think we had just like on the first year of operation. Yeah, that, that, that that's really, yeah, that, that's really the stats. So when PICS um, started, when it comes to financial inclusion, 49 million people started doing electronic transfers and those people weren't doing it before. So you had a gain of 49 million. Um, and I know that, I'm, that to me yeah. is, you know, we hear all the time, the underbank, the people that, you know, aren't able to use these services. That to me screams the answer to that. But, you know, I, I got to tell you though, I don't want to run out of time. And I've got to mm -hmm. ask this question because I know there's people that are listening and going, uh -huh. <laughs> this is great. That's great for Brazil. I love it. Good for you. Good for you. Wonderful. But here's the thing. You're talking about picks, and we've got Fed now coming. Are there some similarities between what is happening, what has happened in picks that we will see with Fed now? I mean, is this gonna is Fed now really gonna be a good thing based off of what we know from picks when it's live and available to everybody? For sure. So actually, there are a lot of similarities between picks um, and the Fed now service, and that there's. Of course, because of that, a lot of lessons that we can learn from um, the PICS and apply to the FedNow service. But to name a few similarities between both systems, um, basically both of them were developed to transfer money from different accounts right instantly. So to start off, the concept is the same. <laughs> That's an important thing to clarify. And also, they were both built under the same technical standards. So they both use ISO 2022. Um, and when it comes to use cases, both support business and consumer use cases. And a lot of the use cases I mentioned here are also applicable in the U.S. Um, and of course, like both systems are operated by uh, the respective right, central bank. So the national um, central bank in each country. And all this like helps a lot um, on uh, on. Uh, basically on applying right some similarities from PICS to uh, to the FedNow service. So there are a few takeaways um, from PICS that we can apply directly. For example, like PICS used a directory, right, that had a lot of like account data that um, linked the account data with aliases and made it a lot easier to do money transfers oh but there's not but that that's easy there's a centralized um uh, directory in brazil yes but you can still create directories in the us so you can have um different directories that can interoperate or of course you can have also uh, a centralized directory that is provided um and that's all only like one example. Another example is 
when we talk about um, frauds, of course, when you create... Uh, did you just say the magic word of fraud? Yeah, so I did. You know, that's the F word of payments right there, fraud. <laughs> that's the one that gets everybody's attention. People are like, don't say that word. But yes. it's the reality. So <laughs> what, what's going to happen with fraud? Um, so when you start like you know, a, a new payment reel, it, it's hard for you to imagine how it's going to be defrauded, right? And one thing that wasn't expected in Brazil was the increase in kidnapping. So when we look at the state of Sao Paulo, which is um, basically the most densely populated um, state in Brazil and also the wealthiest, um, the number of kidnapping cases grew in over uh, grew um, to reach uh, the highest levels in over like 15 years. And that and basically what the central bank did was it created a lot of like rules to reduce that. So one thing that was implemented, for example, as a, a safety feature was a day and night transfer limit. And also uh, that is set up by the user. And there's a system block for changes to those limits under 24 hours. So um, those limitations are really important to reduce, you know, crimes and, uh, and frauds. And a great part of that is a lot of countries implemented instant payments already, right, in Brazil too. So you can get inspired by those um, safety uh, systems and you can apply that in the U.S. Another important thing I already mentioned, which is indirect participation, right? So um, being able to use tech providers to join the system. So. You're a small financial institution and you want to join the system. You want to offer that to your, you want to offer that new service to your clients. It's not impossible for you to do that. Oh, but I don't, I don't have a tech system. I don't have, I don't have a, sorry, I don't have a tech team. Um, yeah, that's why you can refer to tech providers and they'll help you with that, you know, and oh, but my course. You know what? I had a friend that recently said, and he works in the payments industry running a nonprofit association, actually, and it said, what we do is we employ the payments professionals that institutions can't employ, but allow them to make use of our professionals to be able to compete with any size financial institution because they have the same access to the same level of knowledge. That's perfect. That's exactly it. Um, so in, in the end of the day, it's possible for you, small financial institution, to join this. So uh, basically, uh, to wrap it up, and when we talk about the, the American market, you know, the U.S. market, of course, like we're talking about a market that is a lot different from the Brazilian market. No doubt. Of course, we're not, we don't imagine a mandate from a... Uh, 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 from from the government in the U.S. and no, uh, no and that. no, and the U.S. Um, has a market that is forty times bigger the Brazilian market in terms of number of depository institutions, for example, and uh, um, and it, well, we know as, as we just mentioned, right? The, the Fed won't be mandating uh, anytime soon, even though of course it's a solution developed and sold by the Fed. Um, and and that said, I believe that service providers are the key uh, to increase adoption. And, um, and, and besides that, um, it, a really important thing is it's also a system that the market trusts, right? In the end of the day, it's provided by the Fed and uh, that really increased trust in the market. Um, so I believe that the FedNow service will be adopted in the U.S., but it will be slower than PICS. Um, but banks will soon enough understand that um, they'll lose account holders um, if they don't get up to speed with the new payment rails. It's a matter of competition, right? It's a matter of offering a, bad, a, a better service to your clients. And um, there's a, I, I read a phrase, right, of a, uh, an executive from Itau, as I mentioned, right? Itau is the, the leading bank 
um, in Brazil. And uh, this executive is responsible for business intelligence in, in, in Itaú. And uh, I'll quote him here because he just said, from the moment we move on to understand how this segment of the population uses pigs, we will be able to offer specific services for them. And he's basically talking about the people that are joining electronic transfers, that are joining uh, basically this whole digital world because they were out of the system before pigs even happened. So doing a parallel here, that's what I believe it's going to happen in the US and that's what I believe it's the future. All this unbanked people, this people that um, don't really have access to resources, they they can through instant payments, you know, and banks are going to feel the competition through other institutions that are going to do it. So. Basically, in the end of the day, is if you are a financial institution, you don't want to you don't want to be behind a competition. You know, the future will come. You know, and the market will develop. And the moment is kind of now because it's when it's starting off. Maybe later on, you're going to be late, right? So um, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned here. Like not only the Brazilian system, there's so many other cases. There's Australia. There's India. There's so many cases. Well, we might have to save those discussions for another day because we have yeah. ran out of time. I mean, I think you nailed it with the moment is now. And the moment for me, I believe the moment is now for Fed now. Folks, this has been Carolyn Cipriano with JJ Fortech. If you want to get a hold of her, she's available on LinkedIn. You'll be able to find her. Won't be too hard whatsoever. Also, if you can't find her there or need to get in touch with her, you can email me, Kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. I will do my best to get you in touch with her. And if there's a topic or maybe there's a presenter that you think needs to be on the payments podium, email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. Because as always, I will do my best to make sure that your questions get answered. That presenter gets to take the podium to educate us all on what's happening in their world of electronic payments. But as always, too, I got to say for now, class dismissed. Mm -hmm.